The Game Boy Advance SP was originally released on March 23, 2003 in North America as the successor to the time-tested Game Boy lineup of handheld video game consoles. It boasted an all-new clamshell design to protect your screen, full backwards compatibility with all Game Boy games, meaning you could play any game previously released for any Game Boy, and best of all, it had a screen you could actually see. Nah, but like seriously, up until this point, Nintendo was using calculator screens or something. But why would someone want to use this thing nearly 20 years after it was first released? Put simply, it's the expansive list of games for the system, combining all libraries of previous Game Boy games, as well as its own. There's something like 3,000 games you can play, meaning most, if not everyone, will have something that suits their tastes. So, as for what I'm actually going to be doing today, I will be taking apart an old Game Boy Advance SP and will give it new life with an IPS screen, better battery, new shell, and wireless charging. But before we can do any of that, we, you know, have to buy our system. Uh, in my case, I used a website called Sendico, which is a proxy service that allows you to buy things on sites only meant for specific countries, with Sendico specializing in Japanese sites. We'll be buying off Yahoo Auctions, which is a site that is exclusive to Japan because no other country still remembers Yahoo. I ended up purchasing a Platinum Game Boy Advance SP, as well as some other stuff to offset the shipping costs from Sendico. I purchased the IPS screen, battery, shell, and buttons off a site called Retromodding, which sells modifications for a variety of different game consoles, and the wireless charging coil off Amazon. After it arrives at our house, before we can actually start doing anything, we also need a Phillips head screwdriver, a tri-wing screwdriver, some capped on tape, and a soldering iron. Starting on the back of the system, there is one Phillips head screw for the battery cover. We will also be removing the battery itself. There are four tri-wing screws in each corner of the system, and then two more screws behind the battery and on the bottom of the system where you would insert a game. On the motherboard, there are three Phillips head screws. Once removed, carefully lift up on the board and remove the ribbon cable by pushing the two brown tabs. Remove the buttons, membrane and speaker and put everything to the side. There are five tri-wing screws hidden beneath rubber screw caps holding the top of the shell together. Carefully, or not so carefully in my case, use a small tool to pry the rubber caps off and reveal the screws. Now we can unscrew each of the five remaining tri-wing screws, and just like that, you've successfully taken apart a Game Boy Advance SP. Using the screwdriver, we push the hinges from the inside until they pop out. The hinges often give people the most trouble, so remove them with caution. So now that the system is completely disassembled, it's time to rebuild it with its new parts. Starting with the shell, I decided to go with a smoked glass look to it. First, we place the wireless charging coil into place, making sure that the magnetic spacer is attached. The magnetic spacer is there to help charge the system faster and more efficiently. While installing the IPS screen, we also need to attach a small orange circuit board with the ribbon cable to the back of the screen with some capped on tape. 
there's a small folding connector on the screen that plugs directly into the circuit board. Fit the two top pieces of the shell back together and screw the five tri-wing screws back into place. Next up, place the buttons, membranes, and speaker into the shell. After this, we will solder the small wire that came with the IPS screen to the contact that says Q12B to the contact on the ribbon cable. Once that's complete, lay the motherboard inside the shell and make sure to feed the wires through to the other side of the motherboard. I wanted to see if the system was working, so before soldering the two wires for the wireless charging, I put the system back together and turned it on. Yeah, so that didn't work. This was a careless mistake on my part because if I had just tested it before completely reassembling the system, I would have been able to either get my money back or get a replacement. I got neither. Yeah, so I ended up contacting Metro Modding anyway and they gave me some options I could try to, you know, fix the screen. Uh, none of them worked and I ended up determining that the system was not the problem and it was instead an issue with the screen drawing too much power. This was because I would turn the system on and it would last like a couple minutes at most, which would not have been the case if the screen was working as intended. In a last ditch effort to save my project, I took everything apart again and installed the old screen back inside the system. And after turning it on, I was relieved to see that everything still worked and I didn't mess up my console with like a bad soldering job or something. At this point, I thought I might as well just try to install the wireless charging because, you know, I wanted to see the project through. So that's what I did. I soldered the two wires to pins 2 and 6 on the charging port and put it all back together one last time. And with little hope... Oh, that's cool. After dealing with all the issues with the screen, I was so happy to just end up with a working system, even if it wasn't what I originally planned for the project. And yeah, that's it.